वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर टी विजय कुमार आई एम अ प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश एट उस्मानिया यूनिवर्सिटी हैदराबाद दिस मॉड्यूल इज टाइटल्ड गुगिवा थियोंगो पेटल्स ऑफ ब्लड दिस इज इन द पेपर एफ्रिकन एंड कैरिबियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश इन द सब्जेक्ट इंग्लिश The sequence uh, that we follow in this module is something like this. We will begin with some basic details about Gogiwa Thiongo and his works, and then I'll try and explain the context of the novel Petals of Blood, the plot of the novel, and Petals of Blood and its relation to the other work of. Gugiwa Thiong his earlier novels then we will look briefly at the characters and the major themes in the novel Gugiwa Thiong is an East African writer he is a writer from Kenya born in 1938 Gugiwa Thiong is easily the tallest among the East African writers it is very easy for us to compare him with Chinua Achebe and we can treat Gugiwa Thiong'o as the East African counterpart of the Nigerian writer Chinua Achebe just as Chinua Achebe ushered in a new writing in West Africa Gugiwa Thiong'o inaugurated a new writing a new kind of writing from East Africa Gugi has written both novels as well as he is well known for his literary criticism and essays he has also written a few plays so let us now look at some of the novels that he has written his first novel was titled weep not child 1964 the river between 1965 a grain of wheat 1967 as you can see gugi's first three novels came rapidly one after the other and while writing all three novels gugi was still a student between his third novel a grain of wheat and his fourth novel petals of blood there's a gap of 10 years this gap is important and we will try and uh, explain this gap but Grain of Wheat gave of course his first novel Weep Not Child was the first major right novel from East Africa in English and his Grain of Wheat was considered a masterpiece it was a novel which was hailed as a very complex very subtle and a very mature novel for a young writer like Ngugi His fourth novel Petals of Blood published in 1977 10 years after his third novel was also his last novel in English After Petals of Blood Gugi stopped writing in English and he switched over to his mother tongue Gikuyu and he wrote uh, novels in Gikuyu and later translated them or collaborated in the translation of them into english in gikuyu he published three novels so far devil on the cross 1980 matigari 1986 and again after a 20 year gap he recently uh, in 2006 he published uh, wizard of the crow gugi is equally well known for his literary criticism and very polemical essays Here are some of the the major anthologies of Gugi's essays. His first anthology of essays was titled Homecoming and this was published in 1972. His second important collection which became very popular, very famous is Decolonizing the Mind 1986. Moving the Center is another important 
collection of Nugi's essays published in 1993. There are others, but I'm not mentioning all the others because there are anthologies like From the Barrel of a Pen and so on. What I want to mention next is Ngugi's prison diary, Detained. This was published in 1981. And two other publications, although they are not anthologies, but in a way individual uh, essays, were you know, very important in terms of, uh, in, in the way in which we understand Ngugi and his writing. The first one is on the abolition of the English department. This was a pamphlet a campaign that he, along with other writers like Taban Leo Leong, uh, you know, led when they were uh, teachers, uh, you know, in in uh, University of Nairobi. This was uh, originally published as a as a pamphlet in 1968 and later published as an essay in 1972. Then the last one that I want to mention, which is very important in terms of Gugi and his politics, is the Asmara Declaration of African Languages and Literatures. The Asmara Declaration on African Languages makes a very strong plea that African writers should stop writing in European languages and should write in African languages. Gugi has also published a few plays and I mentioned just three of them because each one of them is important for a different reason. Gugi's first publication was actually a play, not the novel, but it, this play, uh, The Black Hermit, was actually published before Ngugi's first novel. His second play that I want to mention, The Trial of Dedan Kemati. Now, Dedan Kemati was a freedom fighter and who was hanged to death during the colonial rule. And in, in this play, Dedan Kemati uh, becomes, of course, the hero and his entire uh, capture and his trial are uh, dramatized in this play. This is considered, in fact, Gugi's most mature play. The last play that I want to mention on Gugi is a play that he wrote in Gikuyu and later translated into English as I Will Marry When I Want. This was in 1977. This is a play which we will refer to once again a little later. Now, coming back to Petals of Blood, published in 1977, the title comes from a poem by the Caribbean writer Derek Walcott's poem called The Swamp. Originally, Ngugi wanted to title this novel as The Ballad of a Barmaid. Of course, The Barmaid is a reference to one of the important characters in the novel. Uh, whose name is Vanja. We will talk about that character a little later. But there is no explanation why at the last moment, just before the publication of the novel, Gugi chose to change the title from uh, The Ballad of a Barmaid to Petals of Blood. The only explanation that I can think of is that Gugi believed that naming the novel after a, one individual, however important she is in the novel, and however important she is as a character, it goes against Gugi's belief that individual heroism or individual qualities should not overtake community action. So probably calling it the ballad of a barmaid would unnecessarily highlight the individual character rather than the collective conscience of the people. Probably that's the reason why he changed the title and gave it uh, the title which we have it today, Petals of Blood. Now, Petals of Blood is a novel that deals with the social and economic situation in Kenya after independence. And it also deals with the, the novel is, a, uh, you know, epic in its scale. It deals with several issues of history, of mythology, of the origin and destruction of uh, the villages, and so on and so forth. So it would be impossible to identify one theme as the main theme of the novel. 
what the novel you know in if we make a kind of a very rapid summary what the novel seems to highlight is the urgent need to create a socialist society in which poor peasants and workers are no longer exploited both by foreign as well as indigenous capitalists the entire novel seems to be driven by this kind of agenda of promoting a socialist vision of a society also important in the novel is the mau mau rebellion uh, of the 1950s just a word of explanation the mau mau rebellion was an anti colonialist uh, aggressive violent revolution which of course was militarily suppressed in the 19 late 1950s or so but mau mau rebellion remained a very emotive issue, issue even in post independent uh, kenya uh, so many people felt that the mau mau rebellion was really the the last straw on uh, the colonials back and the mau mau rebellion was actually responsible for the independence of kenya but after independence those who fought in the mau mau rebellion the mau mau warriors were not recognized according to some by the independent uh, kenyan government and so on so there has always been this grudge that the real heroes of kenya's freedom struggle have never received the recognition that they deserved and gugi himself was a close witness of the mau mau rebellion uh, during his childhood and he always felt that the spirit of mau mau has been betrayed by post independent uh, uh, politicians of the post independence period this is also the context of the novel petals of blood as i said petals of blood is gugi's fourth and his last novel in english after that he switched to writing in gikuyu and continue to write gikuyu even now and what is interesting is that this novel petals of blood was released in 1977 by a minister uh, the, a kenyan minister who uh, on that occasion actually spoke very eloquently about the freedom of speech about the need uh, for free free flow of ideas and how you know people should uh, defend intellectual freedom and democratic spirit and so on and so forth but ironically 5 months later gugi was arrested and imprisoned in the most dreaded prison in kenya uh, the most the, what is called the kamiti maximum security prison and he was accused of indulging in anti national activities although he was never formally charged so he remained in uh, this maximum security prison for one year without being charged and it is that one year's experience that he captures in his prison diary detained and it was also during this one year uh, incarceration in the prison that gugi decided that he will no longer write in english but actually write the first novel in his mother tongue gikuyu uh, when and of course uh, uh, you know gugi tells us how he wrote the first ever novel in the gikuyu language on toilet paper while he was in prison and he used to smuggle these bits of toilet paper on which he wrote the novel uh, via the visitors who come to visit him so this was really the turning point in ngugi's life uh, which changed his entire attitude towards creativity towards uh, writing and about who ultimately are your target readers the immediate provocation for ngugi's arrest in 1977 was obviously a play that was being performed a play that uh, gugi wrote in gikuyu which was called i will marry when i want this was a play which was highly critical of post independence governments 
and how the people are are no benefit i mean have not received any benefits after independence and so though so the play was the immediate provocation the novel petals of blood played no less role in leading to the arrest of gogi so what is this novel about as i said it's very difficult for us to summarize um, a nearly 500 page novel and uh, particularly because uh, like a good realist text petals of blood inundates the reader with details and it deals with so many issues that it would be difficult and almost impossible to identify one particular uh, story as the plot or the theme of the novel however the plot of the novel is also in a in a very ironical sense it's a very simple the novel begins with the death of four directors of a brewery and they are all uh, charged to death in a fire accident uh, imprisoned as they were in a particular building and then the police arrest four prominent people of the town the you know this town is called new elmorog and these four uh, important people of the town are each one of them has a very valid reason to be the the culprit each one bears a grudge against the directors of the brewery so each one is a suspect and each one has a good reason to take revenge against these uh, you know directors of the brewery these four characters are munira karega vanja and abdullah and so the novel actually begins as a kind of a murder mystery as a who done it so at the beginning at the very beginning of the novel there is a death there is a murder and the novel seeks to find out who exactly was the culprit you know who exactly was the cause of creating this fire in which the four directors were charged to death but as the novel progresses the novel tells us more than just a murder mystery the novel actually takes us back into the origins of this village and who these four characters are why these four characters are all in this particular town and what is the relationship between them and the the town the novel also tells us shows us actually how a sleepy village called ilmorog transforms into a modern town called new ilmorog so this transformation of a village into town makes it vulnerable to the incursions from outside and the exploitation by outsiders transformation comes to ilmorog in the form of a road a new road being laid by the government and this is a road very grandly called trans africa highway and once this road in you know enters the village the entire village is changed it is no longer the sleepy village to which other people you know come to take shelter because all the four characters all the more four important characters in the novel they are all people who are running away from the town who are running away from their past and they seek shelter in this village called ilmorog but once this road comes development comes and we know what development is development comes in the form of trade of new businesses but it also means that the farmers lose their lands and they are encouraged to take loans which they can hardly afford and of course which they cannot repay and so we have the familiar features of a capitalist market economy entering the new town called the new ilmorog so the sleepy village ilmorog transforms into the town called new ilmorog 
with all the familiar features of a capitalist market economy. What we find very ironical is that this attention of the outside world is drawn towards this village by a march that the villagers themselves took to the, to, took to the town. What really happens in the story is that there is a drought, crops fail, and the villagers jointly, they lead a delegation of the villagers and they go on a long march to the city to represent to their member of parliament. Of course, the member of parliament refuses to meet them. And in fact, um, the member of parliament exploits their poverty and uh, you know he actually uh, rapes one of the women of the village. And the, the plight of the villagers is highlighted in the media. And suddenly, everybody comes to know about this village called Ilmarog. And that actually draws the attention of the outside world towards Ilmarog. And what follows, of course, is what is generally referred to as development. But that development actually leads to the total disintegration of the village. The important characters in the novel are Munira, who is a school teacher. And of course, Munira comes to Ilmarog to escape from his own guilt-ridden past. And Munira falls in love with a young woman called Vanja. And Vanja is the granddaughter of one of the most respected uh, old women in the village, Nyakinua. And this old lady is actually considered the one of the founders of the village. Of course, Wanja is a modern young woman. She is an experienced barmaid and who actually turns a very small shop owned by another character called Abdullah into a very successful business venture. The character of Wanja actually carries a lot of significance in the novel because Wanja really is the connecting link between the past and the present and the present and the future. Because as the granddaughter of the founder of the village, she is connected to the past. As a successful young woman, she's a, an individual of the present. But in this novel, she also is the, she also carries the seed to the future because she's at the end of the novel, she is pregnant. So she is really the connection between the past, the present and the future. But what is also important to the plot of the novel is that Vancha is really the connecting link among all the other characters in the novel. Because Munira covets her, but she is in love with Karega another young man. But it is Abdullah's baby, that Abdullah's child, that she carries in her womb. So the, of the four characters, if we leave out Vanja, the three other characters are Munira, Karega, and Abdullah. And all of them are in one way or the other related to Vanja. So in that sense, she is the connecting link between the other characters in the novel. The other two characters in the novel are Abdullah, very interesting character, because Abdullah is a shopkeeper who runs a very small store, till, of course, Vanja uh, joins uh, him and turns the small shop into a very successful business. Abdullah is a shopkeeper. He has lost a leg in the Mau Mau rebellion. Now, this is an important aspect of the novel because Abdullah really is a symbol of the people who should have benefited from, the, from independence, but in fact, who actually lost whatever they have uh, you know, during this freedom struggle. He's a Mau Mau warrior. He's a Mau Mau rebel, you know, a leader. But 
he what he gained out of this rebellion is nothing except that he has lost a limb so abdullah remains really the symbol of the victim the the exploited uh, victim of the mau mau rebellion the real freedom fighter who does not benefit from independence the last character important character is a young man called karega he is a teaching assistant to munira and karega is educated he you know lives for a while in uh, the city nairobi and when he was in nairobi he is attracted towards socialism and he imbibes the philosophy the ideology and also the vocabulary of socialism and so when he comes back he really becomes the rallying point of the villagers and encourages the villagers to come out of their individual selfish lives and to collect to act collectively so in this sense karega is obviously the representative of ngugi himself in the novel petals of blood has several themes which seem to be a continuation of ngugi's earlier works because some critics have looked at petals of blood as a complete departure from ngugi's earlier works while others see this as a continuation of ngugi's earlier work to my mind both ways of looking at the novel are not incorrect because yes there are continuities and yes there are departures we should look at the novel we should look for continuities in the content of the novel and the departures in the technique that ngugi uses in this novel for example two of the recurrent themes in ngugi's works have been christianity and guilt these are two themes that recur in ngugi's earlier books in this novel also these two themes appear but the importance that ngugi attaches to these two themes and the way he deals with these two themes tell us that he is no longer looking at these two issues in the same manner that he did in his earlier works here for example there is no ambivalence in ngugi in his attitude towards christianity in fact his earlier novel particularly a grain of wheat was praised because you know he showed a remarkable balance a kind of ambivalent attitude towards christianity whereas in this novel ngugi is very clear he is no no longer equivocal in his attitude in his uh, opinion of christianity in petals of blood ngugi looks at christianity simply as another weapon in the hands of the imperial forces for him christianity as it was practiced in africa i repeat christianity not as a religion but the way in which it was practiced in africa the way in which it was used in africa during colonialism ngugi sees it as just another weapon in the hands of imperial forces similarly his attitude towards guilt is markedly different in the petals of blood here in this novel ngugi does not look at guilt as an individual burden because in in his earlier novels characters were burdened with this individual sense of wrongdoing of guilt of shame in this novel however ngugi considers this individual guilt as nothing but a kind of an a kind of a disease that is enforced on the individual by the system because here he does not see guilt as an individual burden but the product of a corrupted system in which the system itself is goes scot free 
the culprit goes scot free and the victim is made to feel guilty so in this novel guilt is not just an individual uh, issue but it is actually there are several public confessions in the novel almost all the characters make a public confession of their past actions and this public confession is supposed to serve both an individual purpose as a kind of a purgation but also it is supposed to serve a public purpose whereby it becomes a kind of an eye opener for the community so here gugi continues the themes but he treats them very differently in petals of blood so in that sense there are both continuities as well as departures in petals of blood now what are the major themes in this novel there are several themes in this novel but one of the main themes is neo colonialism gugi has consistently argued that africa has witnessed merely a trans a transition from colonialism to neo colonialism without going through anti colonialism gugi feels that the modern regimes in in africa not only in kenya but mostly in uh, in all over africa gugi argued that most of the governments that have become that have come to power after independence have merely you know they have not changed anything except that they grabbed power and remained in power uh, through corrupt means so things changed but nothing has or the more the things have changed the same they have remained there is change but there is no transformation so ngugi felt that real change has not actually occurred in uh, in in kenya and in many african countries uh, after independence the governments after independence merely continued the colonial policies of the erstwhile governments and simply you know took power from the white colonial masters and enjoyed their power through corrupt means so neo colonialism where colonialism the political colonialism of the past is replaced by the economic colonialism of the modern multinational capitalist uh, companies and ngugi targets this and he uh, very vehemently argues that unless this structure of neo colonialism is dismantled freedom has no meaning so this is one of the important themes in the novel which makes a very powerful case for a socialist transformation of society a uh, uh, related theme of course is capitalism and capitalism in gugi's view is no longer the capitalism of the outsiders because within the country you know indigenous capitalists have taken over the role of the external masters and they follow the same exploitative economic model and therefore they are equally to to be blamed corruption is another important theme in the novel and of course capitalism and neo colonialism flourish precisely because of a corrupt government and a corrupt regime and lastly gugi feels that the real spirit of mau mau the sacrifices of the martyrs of freedom struggle have been betrayed by the governments which have come to power after independence and he also feels that the genuine aspirations of the people the hopes that they had in independence they have been betrayed by the leaders who enjoyed their power through corrupt means and by pleasing the neo colonial capitalist investments so in a way this novel petals of blood is a powerful statement against neo colonialism in kenya and as well as in africa 
and it makes a very strong plea for not just merely regime change, not just merely a change of one leader with another, not with one set of you know, politicians with another set of politicians, but what the novel is really arguing for is a real transformation whereby it is people who benefit from freedom and uh, independence. So this is really the burden of the novel Petals of Blood. Thank you.